Hey guys and thanks for tuning into this video. As we all know, Tesla is leading the transition to a more sustainable future, and in the process is forcing other car manufacturers to follow suit. The increasing battery cell production facilities also means an increasing demand for raw materials such as lithium and nickel. Such big changes in a market of this size don't happen very often, and in this video we will have a look at some of the opportunities this brings for investors. Two of the most prominent materials used in batteries today are lithium and nickel. In this video, we will focus on the European Union where Tesla, Volkswagen, Daimler and many more are in the process of ramping up their battery cell production. Now here's where things get interesting. The European Union has close to no domestic lithium production and largely depends on foreign countries to import lithium from. European demand for lithium is going to be driven by manufacturers like Tesla that currently finds itself in the middle of building the world's largest battery cell plant at its Gigafactory site in Berlin. But not only Tesla is driving up demand. Also Volkswagen CEO Herbert Dies announced plans to build 40 battery cell production facilities in the European Union to handle the EV overload. And then we also have Daimler, that's in the process of building battery cell production facilities in Eastern Europe. This article on the website of Daimler even talks about Gigafactories likely inspired by the work of Elon Musk. This does not even take into account all the other initiatives in regards to battery cell production over the next couple of years. One could think of smaller companies like Rimac that specializes in building electric hypercars, but also trucks that will eventually be powered by batteries. Scania, one of the world's largest heavy duty truck and bus manufacturers based in Sweden, recently announced that they are ditching fuel cell trucks in favor of all electric vehicles. Other European truck and bus manufacturers like MAN, DAF and Volvo will drive up demand for raw materials even further over the next couple of years. Now here's where things become really interesting. The European Union wants to be fully self-sufficient in regards to raw materials used for battery cell production by the year 2025. As an investor, I'm looking for growth or materials or products that I expect to be in high demand in the future. At a time where EV adoption really begins to get traction, an investment in the early stages of European lithium production to me seems like a golden opportunity. Another argument as to why I think the European lithium industry will see spectacular growth is that in order to create cheap batteries, the cost of raw material needs to be as low as possible. So from a financial standpoint, a lithium mine close to a battery cell production facility obviously sounds far more attractive than importing lithium from the other side of the world. In September 2020, the European Commission published a report called Critical Raw Materials Resilience, charting a path towards greater security and sustainability. The report highlighted Europe's lack of natural substances compared to other areas in the world, especially China, which is the biggest supplier of 10 such materials to the European Union. The EU has calculated that to meet its targets for EV batteries and energy storage, it will need up to 18 times more lithium and 5 times more cobalt in 2030, and almost 60 times more lithium and 15 times more cobalt in 2050. All while global demand for raw materials could increase tenfold. Now, for cobalt, I'm not too sure whether this is going to be such a big issue in the forthcoming years, as Tesla demonstrated they can produce batteries without using cobalt at all. And since cobalt is a pricey material, I expect this material to be ditched rather sooner than later. Since these high nickel batteries are the way to go for the industry, I'm more concerned about domestic lithium production together with nickel mined in an environmentally sensitive way. With this I mean without having it shipped across the world multiple times to end up with usable nickel back at the place of origin. We need efficient nickel ore processing plants in the European Union close to battery cell production facilities to eliminate as much transport as possible. This area of efficient, on-site processing of nickel ore is ready for disruption so be sure to keep an eye on that. In 2016, European lithium production was effectively zero and still today Europe relies heavily on imports of the mineral. However, there are lithium reserves in the European Union in Spain, Austria, the Czech Republic and the UK that are attracting support and capital. The EU report also addressed that if the expected increase in demand is not being looked into, this may lead to supply issues. It suggested 
that the EU needs to reduce its dependency on foreign nations and strengthen diversity and security of supply in order to secure a broader and more stable access to materials. The EU even added lithium to a list of critical raw materials and actively invests in mining for the new EU industrial strategy. And here is where opportunities for investors can be found. The European Union wants the EU to be completely self-sufficient in regards to raw materials needed for the production of batteries for EVs. This means they will support, be it financially or in other ways, the mining industry in the Union in an effort to create lithium self-sufficiency by 2025. Mines aren't set up in a week or a month, they often take years to become ready for production. Drilling samples need to be taken and an analysis of what resources in what quantity can be found where. While doing so, they can't rely on a steady income stream yet, often resulting in a dilution of shares when they're raising new capital to fund the exploration activities. The fact that the EU is supporting these industries therefore is a good thing for investors because it takes away some of the risks of further share dilution. So how can you make a profit from this knowledge? As we all know, the more expensive stocks become, the more capital is needed to double its price. Contrary, the lower the price of an asset is, the less capital is needed for the same doubling. This basic knowledge tells us that for Tesla to double its stock price, it's much harder compared to a lithium or nickel mining stock to double its share price. But in order for Tesla and the EV industry as a whole to grow, the lithium and nickel industry needs to grow as well to fuel this growth. The growth of this industry opens up some great opportunities for investors. There are of course many companies active in the mining industry, but personally I'm invested in European Lithium and Infinity Lithium. Both are in the process of building a domestic lithium supply for the European Union. European Lithium is mining in Austria, while Infinity Lithium is mining in Spain. Feel free to drop a comment suggesting any European mining companies that you think might be interesting for others to look into. In regards to nickel, I've not yet invested in European nickel supply other than Amur Minerals that is based in Russia. This probably is more like a speculative investment that I did due to its low stock price rather than actual business intelligence. I did however invest in Canada nickel and Talon metals that are based in Canada and the US. Panasonic is reportedly considering building a battery factory in Norway and of course they need to be supplied with lithium and nickel. To prevent this video from becoming too long, I won't go into all the companies that could do that, but you might consider having a look at what nickel and lithium mining companies are in the area there. A last takeaway from this video is that one could think of investing directly in nickel and lithium, and although its prices may rise, I expect the mining companies to be the real winners in the end. They are the ones selling the material and making the profits, so those are the companies to invest in. Creating these videos takes a lot of time. While spending a like on this video only takes one second and this really helps me reach more people. And if you really like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with future videos. Thanks for watching and hopefully until next video.